everyone, welcome back to our channel and welcome to Joyce University. This video is again part of my lecture series for the subject, the teacher in the community, school culture, and organizational leadership. This video is also requested by Mom Glory Aleo from Cebu. Thank you so much, Mom, for watching my videos and for sharing these videos to your students. Today, um, I'll be discussing the strengths and the weaknesses of the Filipino character. You know, schools are really built to serve the society and everyone that's in it, okay? And one of the roles of the school really is to ensure that students are well informed, the students understand, and the students are able or capable of addressing different social issues that they are facing. And one of the social issues that they really have to address, that they really have to resolve, is the weakness of the Filipino character. We are Filipinos and there are a lot of things that we have to be proud of uh, as Filipinos. But whether we accept it or not, there are also tons of attitudes and values that are to be eliminated and discarded. That's why school is there for us to, to help us rather to strengthen all these positive attitudes of Filipinos and to help us get away from the negative ones that we practice every day. The first that we will be discussing is the strengths of the Filipino character. I'll just be explaining all this because I know you are very much familiar with all of this already. I'll just be briefly describing each of these strengths of Filipino character. Ang isa ang pinakauna ay ang pakikipagkapwa-tao and this manifested in the basic sense of justice and fairness and concern for others. That's why Filipinos are very good pagdating sa pakikipagpakikisalamuha. The we we mingle from from people from all walks of life and it's just very easy for us to empathize with others to feel their suffering and there are also a lot of times where we cannot bear the sufferings of other people that's why we can that is why it's just also very easy for us to extend our mutual assistance or help to all these peoples because we cannot bear seeing them suffering and that is as well part of pakikipag kapwa tao the second one is family orientation. We love our families deeply. And the concern of family is manifested in the honor and the respect that we give to parents and elders. And this respect and the honor that we give to elders ay hindi lang limited sa kung sino ang immediate family members natin, but to everyone, basta matanda, basta kapitbahay, basta Filipino, we tend to honor them and we tend to respect them. Okay, and at the same time, uh, it's just also very easy for us to sacrifice everything that we have just for the sake of our family, to endure everything for the welfare of the family, and we always do a lot of things for our families to survive or for us to give the best to the family that we have. Kaya nga, di ba, there are people who would go abroad to work, to give life, better life. There are people who would really uh, work ng iba't ibang trabaho just for these people to give, um, to, to let the family survive. So, that's how we love our family. That's why <clears throat> our families are, are considered to be our personal identities and that they are sources of emotional and material support even financial at times kaya nga sabi natin even if other people would let go of us even if other people would leave us so long as our family is there so long as the family is intact then there is nothing we can do so long as the family love us and so long as the members of this family would are always with us then we can never go wrong that's how uh, strong the love that we have for our families the third one is joy and honor and Filipinos really are happy and light-spirited okay we are fun loving we are cheerful and we have a different approach to the ups and downs of our lives and in everything that is happening in our life talaga we always present a pleasant disposition kaya minsan kahit na we are in the middle of 
a problem or a major challenge in our lives, we still laugh at it. Even if we are in the middle of our suffering or in the middle of the problem, diba? we still find reasons to smile. Kahit nababagyo na yung lugar mo, kahit nababaha na yung lugar mo, you always find reason to smile. Those problems, those natural calamities will not hinder us, Okay, will not uh, block us from smiling. Okay, and we also share our misfortunes in comic manner. We also tell our life problems and our life stories in a jokingly manner. Na parang lahat ng nangyayari sa buhay natin ay nakakatawa, nakaka-inspire. Kahit yung mga pangyayari yun naman talaga ay napakahirap na para sa isa. We always are willing to give our genuine smile amidst our problems. Tatak Pilipino po yun. And this sense of joy and humor is also manifested in the Filipinos' love for social celebration, in our capacity to love even in the most trying times, and in the appeal of political satire. Alright? Next, flexibility, adaptability, and creativity. Uh, we are flexible, very evident sa mga Filipinos, yung capacity nila to adjust and to adapt to the circumstances and to any eventualities that come our way. So it's just easy for us to adapt to a new environment. Kahit saan ka pumunta, kapag Filipino ka, you just have to give yourself uh, one month and it's just very easy for you to adapt to a new environment. Or kahit na kakikilala mo pa lang yung tao, it's just very easy for you to talk to that person. Diba? Minsan pag sumasakay tayo ng bus, uh, kakilala lang natin yun ng tao. Pero pag baba mo ng bus, alam mo na kung ilang taon siya, kung anong birthday niya, kung saan siya nakatira. Because just very easy for us to, we are very flexible. Um, in adapting to the new environment and in you know uh in knowing even the per even kakilala mo pa lang yung tao na yon okay so we are also very creative or imaginative we are resourceful we tend to do something out of nothing we can create something out of what is uh, provided to us out of the materials that we have in our own houses but it's just very easy for us to to, to live a uh, well despite the, the environment despite the atmosphere despite the situation that we are into that's why um this trait flexibility adaptability and creativity would generate productivity innovations and survivals for some filipinos and of course filipinos are also hard working and industrious okay hard working and industrious Lahat ginagawa natin, lahat rin natrabaho natin. We have a lot of side hassles. Meron kang permanent na trabaho, pero meron ka pang sideline. Uh, kami po, nung asawa ko, asawa ko, we have a lot of side hassles. We love side hassles. We have our permanent jobs, pero we also sell online. We uh, are agents sa mga properties na binibenta namin. We also find time for creating videos like this. Because we have hopes and we have dreams for our families. We work hard and we are industrious because we just do not have, you know, dreams for ourselves. But more than that, we have hopes and dreams for our family. Okay? And this trait is very evident uh, in Filipinos who would take the risk to work abroad. Okay, at doon sa abroad, they would have two to three jobs at one time para lang mas maraming ipadala dito sa Pilipinas. At ginagawa natin lahat para lang magkaroon ng magandang buhay ang mga, mga taong mahalaga sa atin. That's why hard work and industry would always be there. Next, eto, kilala tayo sa ating pagiging faithful at religious. We are, our life is always God-centered and we are believers of our own. Uh, own God, hindi man tayo lahat Catholics, we might be in different sects or in different religions uh, we may name our God differently but <clears throat> I think we are praising uh, the same one and the same God with different names so kapag may problema tayo we do not at kahit masaya tayo, we still pray, we have this deep faith in God, and we always are hopeful that despite the bad things that are happening now, if we have God in our lives, then we will be saved, we will be able to overcome all those problems, all those ob obstacles that are in our way. Okay, so religios rel religiosity is also observed in daily life among the Filipinos. And um, that's why every activity that we have, if there is a program, we always start with a prayer and end uh, 
with a prayer at the same time and we always have to thank god for all the the the, the the blessings and we also ask God for forgiveness and for mercy okay so parang our life is centered kay God um, at lahat ng ginagala ginagawa natin I always we are always um, following the will of God for us the next one is the ability to survive and this is as well related to adaptability Filipinos are survivors. Filipinos are so resilient. Kaya nga, um, hinahalin tulad tayo sa isang bamboo na resilient siya, na kahit na napakarami ng bagyong dumaan, yuyuko lang yan, pero it will never be broken. Uh, it, will, it will never be broken. Hanggang unti-unti pa rin siyang tatayo sa kanyang mga paa. So, we have the ability to surpass all sad experiences and we have the ability to recover easily from difficult Okay, because we are survivors, Filipinos can do anything, can um, survive anything. Okay, we because we are Filipinos. So when we speak of the natural calamities na nangyari na dito sa atin, lahat ng earthquake, ng mga typhoons, eto ngayon, um, yung yung COVID virus na meron tayo. Uh, one thing for certain Filipinos would always um, overcome all those things because Filipinos are survivors. Diba? Kahit gaano kalakas na bagyo, you'll survive. Kahit na gaano kataas ang baha, Filipinos would survive. Kahit na kada, ka, ka, gaano kahirap mabuhay sa gitna ng pandemic, Filipinos will, will survive because um, because it's in their character. Who uh, giving up is never a um, is never giving up is not welcome sa mga Filipinos. Okay, but this time, I'll be discussing the different weaknesses of the Filipino characters. Yung mga na-mention natin kanina na mga strengths, kapag nasobrahan, okay, lahat ng yon ay magiging weakness, okay? Because whether we like it or not, our strengths are also our weaknesses. And our weaknesses would also be our strengths. This weaknesses of the Filipino character ay sinayit po ni Senator Leticia Shahani. Okay? At ito yung kan uh, ito yung mga weakness hindi masyadong maganda daw na ugali ng mga Filipinos. Una, extreme family centeredness. A family orientation is a strength, pero pag sinabi mong extreme na siya, sobra naman yung pagmamahal mo sa pamilya mo at sa lahat ng kamag-anak mo, it becomes a weakness already. That's why excessive concern for families, it means using one's office and power to protect the welfare of to protect the family's interest, it becomes bad already. Kasi yung extreme, yung excessive family-centeredness natin would make us loyal to just our immediate families or to our relatives. But we tend to neglect the larger part of the community. So ang decision natin nakabase lang sa kung anong maganda at maayos para sa pamilya natin kahit na nakakasama na pala ito sa iba. So we do everything for the family, for any member of the family to succeed, di ba? So kapag ikaw ay nasa position at may kapangyarihan kang iangat yung yung pamumuhay ng ng kapatid mo at gusto mo siyang i-promote, then you would do all possible ways and means for para sa kapatid mo para ma-promote kasi nasa power ka na. Okay? Pag gusto mong pag uh, gusto mong pumasok sa public public school yung kamag-anak mo, you are very much willing to pull some strings para magkaroon ng permanent item yung kamag-anak mo na ito. So because of that, okay? We also cover the mistakes done by any of our family members. So pag sinabi ng pag may nagsabi sa atin na oh, si kuya mo may ginawang ganito, sometimes uh, bakit ako maniniwala sa like kilala ko yung kuya ko? So, you do not believe sa kung anong sinasabi nilang negative things about sa mga kamag-anak mo. Pero, kung napatunayan mo man na totoo yung sinasabi nila tungkol sa kapatid mo, tungkol sa family mo, you would do everything to cover that up. So, you are very much willing because it's extreme family-centeredness. You are very much willing to do all the possible ways and means for your family to succeed. But, you are also very much willing to pull some strings to cover the mistakes done by any of your family member. This actually, this weakness, this behavior would lead to factionalism. Factions. A pamilya ko to, isa lang dapat ang makikinabang dyan. 
Pamilya ko to sila ang unang dapat um, vaccinan. Pamilya ko to sila dapat ang unang makatanggap ng ayuda sa gobyerno. Wala na akong pakialam sa kapitbahay ko. Okay? It also leads to patronage of the family members and to political dynasties. Kaya nga po hindi na mamatay-matay ang political dynasties dito sa Pilipinas dahil sa extreme family centeredness. Okay? And it results in lack concern for the common good and it acts as a block to national consciousness because you are just focusing sa kung anong makakabuti para sa pamilya mo so you disregard kung anong makakabuti sa sa general sa populace okay the second one is extreme per uh, extreme personalism okay itong masyado mong pinepersonal lahat ng bagay na parang feeling mo lahat ng bagay ay may kinalaman sa iyo na ang buhay ng ng ibang tao ay umiikot lang sa iyo so we Filipinos would take things personally okay and it's just very easy for us to Filipino for us Filipinos to be subjective rather than objective so, kapag nag-judge ka ng tao o dahil kakilala mo siya, kaibigan mo siya, you would positively judge the person. Kahit na alam mong hindi ganun talaga ang ugali niya. Okay? You tend, we tend to be subjective. We do not want to be... Uh, we tend to be subjective and we do not want to be objective. And we always involve our emotions in everything that we do. Okay, we always involve our emotions. That's why it's a bit difficult for us to see things through the lens of objectivity. So if someone gives us not so good comment about our performance, okay, ay hindi masyado maganda yung ginawa mo. Kasi dapat ganito, ganyan, ganyan. How do you usually take it? Uh, you take it negatively. Sasabihin mo, hmm, kaya naman yun ang sinabi niya sa akin kasi naiingit lang siya. Kasi mas magaling ako sa kanya. So, hindi mo naiisipin na yung, yung possibility na totoo yung sinasabi niya because your, your, your judgment is clouded by personalism. So, feeling mo, pag may masamang sinabi sa'yo yung, yung, yung tao, sabihin mo, galit lang kasi siya, kaya nasabi niya yun. Ah, hindi niya kasi ako paborito, kaya nasabi niya yun. So, yun, personal, extreme personalism kaya yun. O kaya, we do not agree to the policy of our superior kasi pangit naman talaga yung policy na binibigay niya. Ngayon, uh, dahil hindi nakita natin na hindi masyadong maganda at may mga hindi masyadong hindi magandang magiging epekto yung policy na yon we tell our superior ma'am baka naman pwedeng ganito ang gawin natin ganyan ang gawin natin ganito ang gawin natin pero this superior would not accept us ang sasabihin niya na lang tina-target ka okay iniinis ka walang tiwala sa iyo kasi naingit lang siya kasi ikaw yung superior niya at siya ay hindi superior at under mo lang siya. So, parang ganun. Um, yun, we do not accept suggestions. We do not even accept uh, those things coming from other people because we think that they are not, uh, that they just said those kasi galit sila sa atin, kasi naiingit sila sa atin, kasi uh, mas mataas tayo sa kanila, kasi gusto nilang palitan tayo sa position natin. So, uh, that's extreme personalism. Sa, sa trabaho, maraming ganyan. Um, lahat, sa lahat ng pupuntahan mo, maraming ganyan. So, because of this, the Filipino is uncomfortable with rules and with regulations. Okay? Hindi sila sanay na sumusunod sa batas kasi sasabihin nila, eh, bakit ko naman susundin niya? Ibang tao nga, hindi sumusunod niyan. Eh, bakit ko naman susundin yung policy na yan? Eh, binigay lang naman yan ng, ng taong naiingit sa akin. Alright? So, and we are also not comfortable with standard procedures. Kasi, um, eto, minsan nangyayari to sa opisina natin, uh, imbes na sabihin mo na sana sa immediate superior natin, sasabihin na agad sa presidente. Hindi tayo marunong sumunod sa SOPs. We are not so comfortable sa pag-follow ng standard operating procedures. And as a result of this, we have personal contact in any transactions and these are hard to turn down. So, we have personal contact in any transaction. Ah, hindi ko na sasabihin yan sa din namin. Sabihin ko na agad yan sa presidente kasi makikinig naman yun sa akin. Ah, hindi ko na yan sasabihin sa, sa taong involved. Sasabihin ko na agad yan sa din namin para masira na siya agad. So, we always are putting our personal touch to things that are not supposed to be uh, to we are always putting our personal touch to things na hindi naman dapat. Sa mga bagay na dapat naman sana may SOP. And extreme personalism also leads to graft and corruption. 
uh, because this is very evident in the Philippine society kasi there is preference in giving work or service delivery to the family, to the kapang-anak, to the friends, to compadres, and to other connections. Okay? And extreme personalism will also lead to uh, nepotism, to lagayan, or worse, to graft and corruption. The next, Filipinos, uh, we Filipinos, we, are, we lack really discipline. So, a casual attitude toward time and space, and this is manifested in the lack of precision and compulsiveness, and at the same time, in poor management and procrastination. I think I'm so guilty with this. Filipinos are fun to procrast, fun of procrastinating. Yung, bukas na yan, bukas na natin gawin yan. Uh, uh, bahala na bukas. Okay? Tapos, Ako, minsan, isang, isa sa mga defense mechanism ko pag nagpo-procrastinate, ako sabihin ko na lang, oh, mas nakakapag-work work kasi ako pag nagra-rush. Mas nakakapag-work kasi ako pag nagra-rush. So, kahit na pwede mo naman gawin ngayon, pero dahil matagal pa naman ang deadline, um, hintay mo talaga yung deadline, magpo-procrastinate ka. Kung bukas na yung deadline, mamayang gabi mo palang gagawin. Lack of discipline. And poor time management. Uh, guilty din po ako dyan. Um, I, I, it's so difficult for me to uh, manage my time. That's why uh, late ako magbigay ng mga requirements. Late ako magbigay ng mga grades. And hindi lang naman po ako ito. In, it's actually a, a behavior of the Filipinos. We lack really discipline. We lack precision. Okay? And... Um, <clears throat> Hindi din, we also lack standardization and quality control. Yun nga, kah dahil wala kang disiplina, uh, pwede na lahat. Kahit hindi masyadong maganda, okay na. Kasi wala nang time para gawin. Diba? Uh, wala nang oras para gawin yan. So, okay na yan. Bahala na yan. So, kapag ikaw ay napagsabihan, magpapalusot ka. Okay, marami kang palusot. Kung bakit hindi mo nagawa yan? Ay, ma'am, kasi nagawa ako ng ganyan, nagawa ako ng ganto, nagawa ako ng ganyan, na... Uh, basta lang makaalis ka doon sa conversation na yun nagpapalusot tayo tas nagsushortcuts tayo hindi tayo dumadaan sa proseso at dahil nagdiningas kogon din tayo saka lang tayo magaling sa umpisa pero as you go on wala na nakakalimutan mo na yun hindi ka na um, hindi mo na ginagawa yung trabaho mo uh, ng maayos and it also says here the lack of discipline results to inefficient work systems correct okay kasi kapag inefficient ka walang discipline ang mga empleyado uh, lahat maapektuhan kung late ka sa pagpas ng grade which I am guilty of kapag late ka magpas ng grade lahat maapektuhan yung mga estudyante mo will be affected and there would also be violation of rules and work ethic um, casual work ethic lacking follow through it Alright, so yun. So that's how important discipline is. So if Filipinos are really disciplined, okay, parang ngayon, amidst the pandemic, kung disciplined lang tayo, alam natin yung mga protocols, uh, sumusunod tayo sa mga protocols na ibinigay ng ating gobyerno, then hindi sana tayo masyadong naapektuhan ng COVID-19. But because we lack discipline, we go out without uh, face mask or face shield, we mingle with people with COVID-19, positive uh, with COVID we disregard the protocols, lalong dumadami ang kaso natin. That's how important discipline is. The next one is passivity and lack of initiative. Okay, we are so passive. We we do not also initiate. Um, lagi tayong nag-aantay ng iba para utusan tayo kung anong gagawin natin. Kahit kaya mo naman gawin, nakikita mo na at kaya mo naman gawin yung bagay na yun. Hindi mo pa rin siya gagawin. You always have to wait someone to tell you, oh, uh, gawin mo na yan. Pup Hintay mo pa silang pupukin ka para gumalaw. Okay? Tapos, we also show strong reliance to others. So parang hindi na tayo kaya hindi na natin kaya mabuhay nang wala ang iba. Na parang lahat ng decision na natin ay nabibase sa kung ano ang sinasabi ng iba. And at the same time, we are also showing strong reliance to our government, 'di ba? Uh, lahat kasalanan ng gobyerno. Bakit walang makain ang pamilya mo kasi ang gobyerno ganito? Bakit ka nagka-covid kasi ang gobyerno ganito? So parang we tend to to be so much um we depend so much to those who are in authority, to those who are in the government, and we think that they should be the one to be doing a lot of things for us. Okay? And we also tend to show submissiveness to those in authority. So, kaya parang ang um, polis siya, natatakot ako, polis kasi, kasi siya eh, kaya pinagbigyan ko na lang siya. So, ah, kasi siya ang ano namin, ang mayor namin, so kahit hindi maganda yung, yung, yung proyekto niya eh, pina, in-approve ko na lang, ang mayor naman kasi siya. 
So we tend to show a submissiveness to those in authority. And it's just very difficult for us to raise issues or to question decisions of our superiors. So parang, kasi minsan, kapag nagsasuggest ka naman o kapag nagko-question ka naman ng decision ng ng ng, su- ng superior mo sasabihan ka na mareklamo ganun eh ito na naman si John nagrereklamo na naman eh, hindi naman ako nagrereklamo nagsasuggest lang naman ako so dahil yun ang naririnig ko every time that I would uh, I would um, let them hear my voice during meetings and the like pero ang dahil lagi na lang sinasabi nagrereklamo ka so ang magiging tendency is that you just have to shut your mouth and to just say okay ma'am and and would just accept everything na gusto nilang ipagawa sa yo gagawin mo na lang din kung ano ang decision nila without even asking uh kahit, uh w- even without asking something so uh, sinabi na eh, gawin ko na lang ito kasi ang gusto nila eh, gawin ko na lang that is why because of this one Filipinos are very easy to be oppressed and to be exploited Okay, yon. Mm, hindi naman kasi nagrereklamo si si Joy, so ipagawa ko na ulit ito. Ah, hindi naman kasi siya, hindi naman kasi sumasagot si si JM, so utusan ko na lang ulit siya kasi hindi naman siya nagreklamo last time. Ah, ilagay na lang natin tong tong um decision na to, tong rule na to kasi ah uh, kahit ayaw naman ng mga empleyado natin, hindi naman sila magsasalita. Susunod at susunod lang naman sila. Blind followers of the law. All right? Blind followers of the rules. Next. Uh, there is also a high tolerance of inefficiency, poor service, and even violations of one one's basic right. So, yeah, mataas ang tolerance natin sa inefficiency. Kahit na nakikita natin na hindi naman talaga siya efficient, na pangit naman ang ginagawa na, na hindi siya karapat dapat doon sa position niya, wala tayong sinasabi. Kasi wala, hindi naman pinapakinggan yung bosses natin. So, kahit pangit yung service na binibigay ng ng hotel na to, or ng restaurant na to, it's just okay for us because we do not complain. We do not complain. It's just easy for us to accept things at is, uh, to accept something as it is, it's just very easy for us to shut our mouth and avoid complaining. That's why it's just very easy for us to be exploited by our superiors or by the by the richer individuals in our society, by our administrators. Okay, next. Masyado din tayong patient. We are too patient at matiisin. Okay, napaka matiisin natin. We also have this bahala na system at naniniwala tayo sa sabihin natin, ah, no matter what, at least we tried. So, yeah, those are manifestations of positivity and lack of initiative. Next one, colonial mentality. Ito, we lack patriotism or an active awareness or appreciation and love for the Philippines, mas gugustuhin natin yung product sa ibang bansa, mas gusto natin yung mga imported na products kesa sa products dito sa Pilipinas. We prefer iPhones than Cherry mobile phones. Uh, we prefer uh, uh, bags or shirts na na-produce sa ibang bansa kesa sa mga produced dito sa atin. Kasi minsan naman kasi talaga mas matiba yung mga bagay na yun. But that's just one of the basis of colonial mentality. And um, we prefer things that are foreign than local. Okay? So, pag sina- tsaka minsan, mas, pag namasyal ka, mas parang um, nakakaingit yung mga taong namasyal na sa, sa Paris kesa namasyal sa Boracay. Di ba? O kaya nagpunta sa Bali kesa nagpunta sa Palawan. Kasi foreign land, mas ma... Uh, mas parang mas mabigat para sa mga Filipinos yung mga bagay na galing abroad yung mga bagay na nakikita abroad kesa sa mga bagay na nasa Pilipinas kaya yung mga mayayaman napasyal na nila lahat ng mga magagandang tourist spots sa ibang bansa pero hindi pa man din sila nakakaapak sa mga tourist spots sa Pilipinas it's colonial mentality also we too have basic feeling of national inferiority we always think that our uh, the Philippines is inferior to other countries and that Filipinos are not comparative to the Westerners. So, pag Filipino ka at andito yung Westerners, parang mas, ah, oh, Amerikano siya, no? Galing naman niya, foreigner kasi. So, colonial mentality. The next one is kanya-kanya syndrome or talangka mentality, crab mentality for that matter. Ayaw nating nakikitang tumataas or umaangat yung iba, pinipilit natin silang hilain pababa. Minsan, mas gusto pa lang na natin na nasa baba tayong lahat kaysa may isa sa atin na umangat. Talangka mentality. At kanya-kanya syndrome. 
'di ba? O ak- akin to, akin uh, akin to, ayo kong i-share to kasi akin lang to sa pamilya ko lang to kasi pinaghirapan ko to. Tapos pag may assignment ka o kaya learning plan ka, akin to, ginawa ko to, gawa ka naman ng sarili mo, kanya-kanya syndrome. And it is evident in the personal ambition that is completely insensitive to the common good. Like the lack of sense of service among Filipinos in the government bureaucracy. Tapos, we also dump in and this kanya-kanya syndrome rather or talangka mentality uh, dampens uh, cooperative and communi- community spirit and uh, tramples others' rights. So, yon. So, kanya-kanya karab mentality. Ayaw mo umangat siya. Gusto mo nahihirapan lang siya. O di, gagawin mo lahat para ma- ma- mahirapan siya even if you would you know, you would be against the rights of these people. Next, lack of self-analysis and self-reflection. Ito yung hindi pa, ang, ang, ang self-analysis at self-reflection ay hindi uso para sa atin. It's not our habit to just, uh, to be, uh, before we sleep at night, isipin natin ano yung ginawa ko, may masama ba akong ginawa, bakit ko ba ginawa yun, bakit ko ba nasabi yun, tama bang gawin ko yun, o tama bang sabihin ko yun. So, the tendency to be superficial, is one of the manifestations of this one and in the face of the serious problem and social problems we do not ana- analyze it we do not reflect it okay uh, kapag may nag-explain uh, basta naintindihan na natin okay na kahit hindi naman dapat yun yung explanation so we tend to be superficial as regards handling problems as regards dealing with problems Natatakot tayo minsan na alamin yung mas malalim na dahilan ng mga bagay-bagay. Nakokontento tayo sa uh, superficial, sa mababaw na dahil shallow reasons about a certain act. And ewan ko, siguro dahil hindi tayo nag-analyze ng mga bagay-bagay na ginawa natin. We do not examine ourselves. We do not examine the wrongdoing. So parang feeling natin na tayong ginawa pero actually meron pala. Hindi natin siya nasaktan pero actually nasaktan pala natin sila. Why? Because we lack self-reflection. The next one is the emphasis on forma rather than substance. So, ito naman, parang we focus more on the appearance rather than the content. So, mas pinapaganda natin yung sarili natin kesa, kesa gawing mas matalino yung mga sarili natin. That's one thing. Uh, mas binibigyan natin yung kulay, yung mukha natin, nagme-make up tayo, kesa lagyan ng laman yung utak natin. Emphasis on, po- on forma. Tapos, uh, okay lang na hindi ka masyadong magaling sa school, basta maganda ka at sexy ka. Uh, tapos, in judging people uh, and in loving people as well, we tend to focus on the physical appearance kahit yung attitude medyo taliwas. Okay? Because we are more particular with what is physically beautiful. Right? That's emphasis on forma rather than the substance. Sa teaching naman, uh, ang mga teachers, mas binibigyan nila ng mas mataas na grade, yung mga projects na parang uh, may mga decoration, mas maganda ang pagkakagawa. Pero kahit pangit naman yung content niya, mataas pa rin ang grade niya. Kesa sa mga projects na uh, wala kasing pera, kahit hindi masyadong mapaganda, sinulat kamay niya lang, pero ang ganda naman ng content. ba? So, yon. Tapos, there are also some instances na yung mga administrators or yung mga superiors would formulate a system of rules and programs. Ang dami nilang sineset na mga rules and programs na hindi naman effective. Basta lang masabing uh, may program siya, basta lang masabing may naisip siyang activity, kahit na ineffective naman siya. Forma pa rin yun, forma over substance quality over quantity over quality tapos yung iba um, rather than focusing on the effectiveness of the classroom instructions and good study materials they bombard the teachers with a lot of paperwork a lot of things to be done a lot of report to 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 finish making them drained and taking most of their classroom time to prepare these requirements for submission kaya ang nangyayari ang dami naming pinapas na modules para lang mabit yung deadline, uh, ipapas na lang namin siya kahit hindi masyadong maayos. Kasi, ang, ang evaluation naman sa'yo would be based on kung how punctual ka sa pagpapas ng mga modules mo disregarding the quality of the module that you pass. Okay? Kaya yung iba, pas lang ng pas, basta mabit nila yung deadline, pero hindi na nila inisip yung quality ng trabaho nila. That's forma over substance. And, uh, these practices as well would make the educational system more form but having no substance at all. 
we give them bulk of work but the substance of the work the quality of the work is nothing that's parma over substance and what did schools do to respond to this report of Shalani? Shahani? Una, et ngayon, uh, dahil may mga ganitong dapat nating iwasan, meron tayong mga subjects sa K-12 curriculum na values education, uh, which is now called education sa pagkaka pagpapakata or the ESP, trying to, this subject would try to eliminate these negative attitudes, this weakness of the Filipino character and would inculcate among the young Filipino learners the strengths of the Filipino characters. Tapos sa senior high school naman, meron silang subject na philosophy of the human person and personality development. So all these things um, would at least help um, eliminate all these weaknesses that we have in our character. But the result would be better if the home Okay, the home would do its part in emphasizing the strengths and eliminating the weaknesses of the Filipino character. The home plays a very important role in you know teaching their the young values and morals and good qualities of Filipinos and the school would actually strengthen those things that are learned at home. So these are the weaknesses and the strengths of the Filipino characters. I hope you have learned something from this. Goodbye. See you next time.